Hi everyone, it's Jill with Greenwood Girl Cards and I am coming on to do a little bead uh, stringing tutorial. And I have a bracelet started here and I've had several people ask um, if I could show how you tie um, a bracelet, how you um, tie the knots between the beads on a bracelet to bead it. So um, I thought I would show you guys really quick how to do that. And um, just to get started, I, uh, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Oh, my camera doesn't want to zoom right now. Okay. <laughs> oh, the joys of filming. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm going to just show you how to tie a knot on, uh, up against a bead. So you're going to literally just put a knot into your string. And the type of string I'm using is a waxed cording that you can get at any of the big craft stores or any bead store. So you put your knot in and then you can take a beading awl, which you can literally use one of your um, poker tools that you use for your, um, for your dies. But this is actually a beading awl and you just pull the knot tight with the awl inside all the way up to the bead. And then you slip it out and then finish tightening the knot up against the bead, okay? And the bead will sit right up, the knot will sit right up against the bead, and then you go on to the next bead. So I have some beads laid out, and I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna go ahead and tie a few of these so you can see what it's like. So I'm just gonna go ahead and string another bead. And you could start by, um, you could start by tying your clasp at the end and then stringing your beads that way, but I found from a design standpoint that I like to string the beads outwards and then put the clasps on it last. So that's what I've been doing lately, but you can do it either way. It really doesn't matter. Whatever you're comfortable with, if you've got your design set and you know exactly how you're going to string your beads, then um, you can start with the clasps. I'm going to pull back here to get this string through the bead. I'm having problems. Um, sometimes the end of the cording can start unraveling and when that happens I just twist it with my fingers because the wax really does help. Um, the wax helps you get the cording to stand straight and then you can put your bead on. So, okay, so there's another bead on there. I'm going to tie the cord in a knot. And then I'm going to show you another way to do it if you don't have an owl or a pokey tool. I literally can just hold the string and push the knot with my fingers all the way up to the bead and then tighten it down and it'll be tied right up against the bead. Okay? So I know my lighting's not the best. It's about 5.30 in the morning and um it's nice and quiet and uh, my son's still asleep so I thought this would be a good time to just come down and try and do this for you guys. So I'm going to grab uh, the same type of bead for the other side and go ahead and try and string it. Ooh, I did it on camera, yay. Okay. I have deep respect for you, Anna, doing um, jewelry tutorials on camera. It is not an easy thing to do. I don't have a setup where my camera's overhead so it's just right in front of me which um, just makes it kind of hard because you're looking through the lens of the camera to try and do what you're doing with your hands. So it's an adjustment. You have to get used to doing it. But there you see I just tied the knot up against the bead. So this is what I have so far. Okay. And I'm just going to keep building out from these center beads to the side. Um, to each side until I have a bracelet that's about seven inches or seven and a half inches long. And uh, one thing with making bracelets for people is... Um, everybody has different size wrists. So you do need to kind of ask if you're making it as a gift, you need to kind of know what size bracelet they wear. Um, usually there's like six and a quarter, seven and a quarter, eight, eight um, inch bracelets. So there's like three different sizes. And you know, the other thing you can do is make a bracelet that's adjustable too. Like you can have um, a little chain extender or something on it. But for these tied ones, I haven't really figured out how to do an extender yet. Um, okay, so here's a little silver bead. It's a little heart. I'm just going to tie this up against the bead again. And you do want to make sure that you start out with 
you know, especially when you're first starting out, start out with a longer piece of cord than you think you're going to need because the knots do take up quite a bit of cording as you tie, okay? So you want to make sure that you have enough um, cord to finish your bracelet. Um, but anyway, this is that is how you do it. And uh, I don't know that you guys want to sit through just watching me tie all these beads on. Um, whoops, I need to turn this one the other way. Uh, Oh, no, wait, I had it right. <laughs> I think I had it right. Uh, oops. Oh, geez, I can't get this one, you guys. See? That's what happens. You get... It's really hard sometimes to string these on camera. So I have, again, Anna... <laughs> I don't know how you do it, but... <laughs> so, okay. So there's another heart bead. These are just little... Um, metal heart beads with um, little ridges on them and I can't get my camera to focus. See the little ridges in them? They're really sweet. Uh, I think they're Thai ones, but I got them at Hobby Lobby, I believe. So I am just, instead of using the awl, I'm just pulling the knot tight up against the bead. So literally I'm using my fingers to tighten it right up against the bead with my fingers until the bead, the knot is all the way against the bead and you can pull it tight with your fingers the other direction too. So that's what we have so far. And literally, I'm just gonna keep beading until I get to the ends and then I literally am gonna tie on these toggle clasps just with some knots. And that's how you end the bracelet. And, uh, and then you can put a jump ring and add a little charm to one side if you want to have a little dangle off your bracelet, okay? So maybe what I'll do is do a second video where I finish this up and I'll show you how to tie the clasps. But for now, this at least gets you started with beading your bracelet. Okay, so I hope that helps. If anybody has any questions, put them down below in the comments. And I'm also going to try and attach a video to this video of the video that I watched to learn how to bead tie because the woman who does the tutorial does a much better job than I'm doing here. Um, I'm just not really set up with an overhead camera and it is very difficult for me to see um, what I'm doing through my camera. So this at least gives you an idea of how to do it and um, you know, put any questions down below, but then go look at that tutorial video that I'm gonna attach because that's really how I learned. And um, I hope, uh, Anyway, I hope for the people that were wondering how to do it that that at least answers your question. And again, you can purchase a beading awl almost anywhere, but if you have one of those pokey tools for your dies, I used that for the first few weeks that I was doing this. And now I've gotten so used to tying them that I don't even use the awl at all, <laughs> pretty much ever. So um, anyway, all right, you guys have a great day. Um, enjoy your week. Here in Seattle, we've been dealing with smoke and ash for about six, seven days now. And they've recommended that we not go outside of our homes, which is really hard when you have a teenager um, who's active. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's been a very interesting week. And, uh, you know, I have allergies and asthma and my heart just goes out to everybody that's uh, struggling with air quality wherever they are. Um, this is our second summer with our the second half of our August being really just um, really poor air quality. I've never seen it as bad as it's been the last few days ever. So um, let's just all pray for rain, for everybody that has fires. Uh, the West Coast has just got fires everywhere. Uh, a lot of them are getting under control and contained, but my heart goes out to the firefighters and to everybody that's uh, had loss. Um, it's just not easy. Uh, I lost a home to a flood once and I can only imagine how much more devastating it is to lose it to a fire, so, or let alone lo lose loss of life. So God bless everybody. Um, have a great week and uh, thanks for taking a look at this little tutorial. Bye now.